I'm a bit of an aviation buff, so I'm certainly biased, but when I'm out here in farm country, I love finding crop dusters and photographing those crop dusters. It's sort of funny, when I'm leading a field photography workshop, the photographers, when I tell them that we're going to go out looking for crop dusters to photograph, they seem completely disinterested. But then once we've found a crop duster spraying a field and they're photographing that crop duster, they get very excited. And when it's all over, they can't wait to do it again. I'm out in the field here and there was a duster spraying these fields. And so I know that he's probably going to be back. He's left the area. He's probably just filling up his tanks and then he'll be back spraying where he left off or maybe some adjacent fields. And so I'm gonna get set up. Now, one of the things that I pay attention to when photographing a subject like this is my shutter speed. First and foremost. Now many photographers think with a moving subject, and of course a crop duster is an airplane moving reasonably quickly, that you'll want a very fast shutter speed to get a sharp photo. But actually I don't want a shutter speed that's too fast because then I'm going to end up with a propeller that is frozen in space, that doesn't look like it's moving at all. I want to see some motion in that propeller and so in this case, I'll generally work with a shutter speed of no more than about 1 250th of a second, usually aiming for about 125th of a second, and then adjust my other settings as needed, wait for the crop duster to show up and fire away. Of course, I'm also going to pay attention to where that crop duster is flying, staying upwind whenever possible because he is spraying chemicals after all, and also trying to make sure that I'm getting a good light angle. It's one of those situations where you can't really control much other than your position and you need to work with what you've got, but it can be some great practice as far as photographing moving subjects, fast action, and coming away with some pretty cool photos in the process. So we'll wait for that crop duster to get back and hopefully get some good images. Now, of course, if you don't have advanced information on where a crop duster is going to be spraying, the behavior of that crop duster can seem a bit erratic and it can be tricky to get into a good position. And that's especially true in the Palouse region of eastern Washington state because there just aren't that many roads and it is hilly terrain and so you're not necessarily able to get into a good position from which to photograph a crop duster. Here, for example, I had a crop duster that was spraying and I just could not get a good angle on the crop duster. I couldn't quite get close enough relative to where the crop duster was spraying and still keep the sun behind me so that I could get good light on the subject. And in fact, that crop duster would pass in front of the sun on more than one occasion. But fortunately, the behavior of the crop dusters is reasonably predictable once you find out exactly where they're spraying. They'll generally be going back and forth to some extent or flying an oval pattern of sorts. And so you can anticipate where they'll be spraying from one pass to the next. Of course, if you can't get into quite the right position as that crop duster comes down and begins spraying the field, you aren't necessarily going to end up with the photos that you think you're going to end up with. Here, for example, the crop duster has started spraying and is getting closer and closer to that field except he then disappears behind a hillside. And so I needed a different vantage point or a different position altogether in order to get the shot I was after. But again, fortunately, the crop duster is going back and forth. So if he goes away from me, there's a good chance he'll be turning around and coming back toward me, perhaps even in essentially the exact same area. And that gives a certain degree of predictability. You still have to be working quickly. You have to really be familiar with the settings for your camera. 